Continuing on with infinite limits, the last time I kind of left you hanging how to find the infinite limits of rational functions. So that's where I'm going to jump right into. We reviewed how to find the end behavior of rational functions by using the face case. And we learned a property that we need to know we're going to use to our advantage. Any time we have something as the constant on the top divided by x to any power in the denominator, as we take the limit approaching either positive or negative infinity, it doesn't matter, our answer is going to wind up to be 0. So now we can move on to the official way to finding infinite limits. The first thing that you need to do is you need to pick out the highest power of x in the denominator. That's the key part, your degree of x in the denominator. And you need to divide every term in it by both every term in the numerator and the denominator. Now that's going to make your function quite sloppy, but then we're going to look at the limit as x is approaching infinity, either positive or negative. Most pieces are going to represent this format here, a constant divided by x to some power. So if we plug in positive or negative infinity, those are going to approach 0. So when I introduced infinite limits to you, I told you not to plug in positive or negative infinity. We actually do that, not in the first step, but only in rational functions and only after we divide every term by this. Now, most of our terms are going to be disappearing. So what we're going to have left is depending upon what face case we're in. In happy and middle face case, pretty much all the terms are going to be 0 with a few exceptions. And that's going to leave us with a number as an answer. We know that there's going to be a number as an answer because we know in happy and middle face we have a horizontal asymptote. In sad face case, I kind of left you hanging because we said, well, there's a way to do it without long dividing. This is the official way. So you should only have one variable left. You can plug in positive and negative infinity into it, and we're going to figure out what's going to happen. Your answer is either going to be positive or negative infinity because it's going to follow that oblique asymptote that we have here. So if we wanted to look at some images of these again, let's go back to my visual. This one here is an example of a horizontal asymptote. Notice it gets close to my horizontal asymptote from the right and from the left, so both of my answers were where that horizontal asymptote was. This visual here is an example of an oblique asymptote. Here it approaches my oblique asymptote, and here it approaches my oblique asymptote. So that's why my answers were positive and negative infinity. But I do not know whether it's positive or negative, because I don't know my oblique asymptote if it's going in this direction, or if it would be going in this direction. If that's the case, then my answers would be flip-flopped here. So I've explained all this hypothetical math to you. Now let's actually apply it in some examples. The first example that I have here is the actual example that I gave you when we were reviewing in behavior. We know what our answer should be of negative 3 halves in both directions because it follows what we learned about the end behavior of middle face case. But let's now figure out how this works by doing the official way of finding infinite limits of rational functions. We're going to divide every term by the highest power of x in the denominator, and then we're going to use that property that most things are going to come down to 0. So let's pick out the highest power of x in the denominator in this example. And that is, of course, x to the third power. So I divide every single term, both numerator and denominator, by this x to the third power. So I have the limit as x is approaching positive infinity of 1 over x to the third power minus 3x 
cubed over x to the third power all over 2x cubed over x to the third power minus 6x over x to the third power plus 2 over x to the third power. So I told you at this point it's going to become extremely messy, and we can see that here, but there's an advantage to that. So I'm going to show you that in a second, but let me just review how I came up with this. All of my pieces here are the exact same thing as all of my pieces over here. The only thing is, is I took each of them and I divided them by x to the third. So I just take every term and divide it by the highest power of x in the denominator. Okay, let me simplify this, and then we're going to use that property that we talked about to our advantage. So I still have the limit as x approaches infinity. My first piece of 1 over x cubed, I cannot simplify at all, minus over here, x to the third and x to the third cancel out. So that leaves me with minus 3. All over, in the denominator, x to the third and x to the third cancel out, leaving me with 2. Minus, here I can reduce one of these x's, x over x cubed. One of them cancel out, but that still leaves me with 6 over x squared. Plus, 2 over x cubed, I cannot simplify in any sort of way, so all I'm going to do is copy that down. So I followed my step number 1. I divided every term and simplified by the highest power of x in the denominator. Now I'm going to use my second step here. I'm going to plug in either positive and negative infinity, and basically that uses this property that I have here. Anything that resembles a constant divided by x to some power is going to become 0. So in this piece, I have a constant divided by x to the third. So if I plug in my infinity, that piece is going to become 0. In this piece, I have a constant divided by x to some power. So if I plug in infinity, that piece is going to become 0. And in this piece, I have a constant divided by x to some power. So that piece, after I plug in infinity, that piece is going to become 0. Notice the only thing that we have left here. I have this minus 3 left, which does not change if I plug in anything. And I have this 2 left, which does not change if I plug in anything, even infinity here. So basically, I have 0 minus 3 over 2 minus 0 plus 0. Of course, that simplifies to negative 3 halves, my horizontal asymptote, or my limit as x is approaching infinity. So this is the official way to finding infinite limits of rational functions. Now, I can do the exact same thing with my second part here as x is approaching negative infinity, but I don't need to because the exact same work is going to happen. All of these blue highlighted things are going to cancel out no matter whether I plug in positive or negative infinity, and so I'm going to be left with negative 3 halves. So I don't have to repeat my work if it's going to be identical at both positive and negative infinity. So this just emphasizes what we know about happy and middle face case. So both limits here, the limit as x is approaching both positive and negative infinity of this function, we'll just call it f of x for simplicity, is going to be negative 3 halves. And again, visually, that's because it's going to approach that horizontal asymptote on both the right and the left-hand sides of my graph. Let me do one more example of that in this video. In the next video, I'll do an extra example. So here, I find my highest power of x in the denominator. It, again, happens to be x to the third, but that's pure coincidence. So I take every term and I divide it by x to the third. 
So it becomes messy for a second, and then everything becomes a lot simpler. 6x squared over x to the third plus x over x to the third minus 4 over x to the third all over 3x cubed over x to the third minus 2x over x to the third plus 7 over x to the third. Again, I just took each of these terms individually and I divided them by the highest power of x in the denominator. Let me simplify them. Here, x squared over x cubed, two of them cancel out. But that still leaves me with 1x in the denominator. Plus, here, one of my x's cancel out, but that still leaves me with 1 over x squared in the denominator. Here, I cannot simplify minus 4 over x cubed in the denominator. Here, all of my x's cancel out, leaving me with 3. Here, one of my x's cancel out, leaving me with 2 over x squared. And here, nothing simplifies 7 over x to the third. If I plug in infinity, anything that represents a constant over x to some power is going to approach 0. So this is a constant over x to some power. This is a constant over x to some power. This is a constant over x to some power, and this, and this. So after I plug in infinity, basically I'm left with 0 plus 0 minus 0 all over 3 minus 0 plus 0, or 0 over 3. And we know when we have 0 in the numerator, that simplifies to be 0. So my infinite limit as x is approaching positive infinity here is going to become 0. That's my final answer, which we should have known because if we looked back at our end behavior, the degree of my numerator here is 2. The degree of my denominator here is 3. My numerator degree is less than my denominator degree. Happy face case that tells me I have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. So that tells me my answer is going to be 0. My part B is going to be exactly the same because it doesn't matter whether I plug in positive infinity in this step or if I were to plug in negative infinity in this step, everything would simplify to be exactly the same. So this here is also going to become up to 0. So my infinite limits at both right and left-hand side of this graph is following my horizontal asymptote of 0. I'm going to stop this video here. And in the next video, I'm going to be doing one more example of finding the end behavior or infinite limits of a rational function. And it's, of course, going to be one where we have a sad face, an oblique asymptote. So this is the one we're going to do it without actually long dividing it out.